my name is Caitlin and welcome to my little YouTube channel where I talk about books. I'm so happy you're here today. I'm especially happy you're here today because today I'm going to be talking about all the books about race that I've read in the last month. And before I even talk about books, I really wanted to take some time to talk about the systemic racism that's happening that has always been happening in the United States and around the world. And as a white person, I've never had this conversation in this capacity before where I'm thinking about it and talking about it every single day and to be quite honest that really pisses me off. I piss myself off and I think this is because I've wanted so badly to be liked throughout my life that I haven't pushed myself into an area of discomfort um, about being loud enough for injustice um, at least not to the daily extent that I should be. I know a lot of people have felt the same way about it and to be frank, we need to we need to get over it. I need to get over it. I need to say things when there's something not right. Um, I need to speak up, but this isn't about me. This is about us. Every single one of us showing up. We need to start showing up every single day. So white people, we have a lot to do. The whole concept and idea behind race was based on a hierarchy. There was never anything neutral about it. And we need to know that and accept that in order to dismantle the hierarchy that we have built. And yes, this is the most powerful hierarchy in the world. So it's going to take a lot of work. It's going to take a lot of time to dismantle, but it is necessary work that we need to do. And it needs to be done because it's something that our ancestors have failed to do to fight for what's right and fight goddamn hard for what's right and we need to do that work now and the truth is the brutal truth is that people who are afraid to say anything right now who are afraid to take action they are racist to some extent they are participating in a racist society and holding it up um they're holding up this hierarchy because they're comfortable with the power that it gives them whether they realize this or not that gives them comfort and they might be doing this unconsciously. I know I have for a long time because I have been comfortable with this power, with my privilege, and it's been so easy for me to go about my day to day not addressing this every day. But that's not what black people are able to do. They're not able to ignore a system that oppresses them every single moment they breathe. And that's a problem and that's what we need to fix. We need to become educated and we need to be brutally honest we need to be aware of what's actually going on and how we're complicit in what's happening. I know it's really uncomfortable to look back, to look at our present, and think about the ways that we have perpetuated racism in our society, whether that was conscious or not, we have done it. And maybe you're scared about having this conversations, these conversations and pushing yourself outside of your comfort zone because you're afraid you're going to say something incorrect or wrong. Please don't let this fear stop you. You are going to say things that are incorrect and wrong, but it's only through that that you can actually learn and grow and change. So we need to push ourselves into that uncomfortableness of being wrong to know what's right. Even if you're not perfect, your imperfection is way better than the silence that we've upheld for hundreds and hundreds of years. And I wanted to be clear that it's not Black people's responsibility to educate us. That's burden is not on them. That's traumatizing for them. And to learn about a society we created that's on us we created the society we need to learn about it we need to learn how to dismantle it so i guess i just wanted to say let's talk let's have these hard conversations let's have the conversations with our racist relatives who might not even know they're racist or let's have those conversations when people say all lives matter or that they don't see color on facebook instead of just scrolling past unfriending them or ignoring them initiate those conversations. They're going to be awkward, yes, but they are necessary. So let's learn, let's fight together. And today I wanted to kind of play off of that. Reading is a huge way to educate yourself about these issues. And I also wanted to be clear that reading is important. It's so, so important and you can learn, but learning means nothing if you don't take action afterwards. And if you don't know where to start with taking action, you're like, okay, I read this book, now what? Um, I posted some resources down below that might help you out in that regard. If you want to talk about it at all, please let me know. I'm always here to talk. 
I also want to make it clear that reading um, books by black authors is not just something that we should be doing this month or next month or for the rest of the year. Should be doing, we should be doing this all the time. We really need to integrate these stories into our regular reading for the rest of our reading lives. If any of these books sound good to you and you want to buy them, please order them from a black owned bookstore. I posted some below. Um, also know that because these are independent bookstores, um, it might take you longer to get your book in the mail. It might take six weeks rather than one day, Amazon. Um, and if that bothers you and you're like, well, I deserve to get this book immediately, um, then I highly suggest that you read Write Fragility, which we'll talk about very soon. Um, just a suggestion, just throwing that out there. Let's get into the books. The way I'm organizing this video is I'm scaffolding the learning. Um, because yay, I'm a teacher, that's what I, I unconsciously do that. Um, so if you can, read all these books. But if you don't know where to start, if you're new to learning about race, this is kind of like a nice order to go in it. And obviously you can read it's out of order. You can read all of them. Please read all of them if you can. Um, but hopefully this will help you kind of get a a feeling of where to start. So if you are just beginning to learn about race, I highly suggest that you start off with Me and White Supremacy by Leila F. Said. Um, this book is brilliant. I think every white person needs to read this book. It is organized into like a month long journal prompt. So every day, you have a reading you do where you learn something new about race and then you do journal prompts and the journal prompts are hard. They are, they ask tough questions that you probably don't wanna ask yourself that you probably don't want to answer but you need to answer them because that work is so, so important. Start with this book. The next book I highly recommend that you start with is So You Wanna Talk About Race and this is the second time I've reading this book and it's just as amazing as the first time. Um, even the second time reading through, I underlined and highlighted so many portions just because, yes, I'm always learning. Even if I literally read the same book, you can read the same book twice and still um, learn new things, still be reminded of things maybe you have forgotten about. I thought that the author did a great job of sharing her own stories as well as being very brutally honest, clear, and open about racism in society today. It's also like very easy to read because the chapters are organized in questions. So like, what if we talk about race wrong? Or what is a school to prison pipeline? It's very clear, easy to follow. Um, you can learn so, so much by reading this book. And the main thing I took away from this book by reading it a second time is that we need to dismantle the machine that is our systematic racist society. Um, we can't just hope that people are nicer to each other. That's not really going to change anything. We need to change the machine, the system. If you feel like, okay, I'm understanding this race thing. I want to dig a little deeper into my role in this racist society then I highly suggest you read How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. This is an absolute must read. He also just wrote a cute little kid's book, um, Anti-Racist Baby. It's adorable. Because um, I think he also brought up a good point. I watched some interviews where he was like, we like to pretend that kids are colorblind, but we need to teach them from the very beginning that racism is a thing. We need to teach them how to be anti-racist from the start. So it's as natural as teaching kindness or love like we do with kids. Um, which I think is really important. Anyways, <laughs> How to Be an Anti-Racist is not a kid's book. Um, this is digging more into how to take action steps. So the initial books were kind of like a general overview about race. This is how to actively be an anti-racist, actively take steps to dismantle the society that we've created. And I took a lot of things from this book, but two things that really stand out to me are the term microaggression. I've seen that word thrown around a lot and microaggressions, I think we need, well, the book says this and I agree, is that microaggressions make it sound small and they may seem small, um, but they are racism. They are macroaggressions all added up. They're a huge problem and we need to change even small things to make a huge difference. Also, we need to turn our feelings advocacy into action advocacy, so or outcome advocacy. So we can't just do things because we want to feel better about ourselves. We have to do things because we want things to change. 
Another book I highly suggest reading of taking like the next steps to learning more about racism and your part in it and what you can do to dismantle it is Right Fragility by Robin DiAngelo. I was a little apprehensive about going into this book because it is written by a white author. Um, she, is, she is a sociologist, I believe. Um, and I didn't, I didn't think it was a bad thing that was written by a white author. Um, I think it can't be the only book you read. I think you should supplement this reading with other books by black authors. Um, but I do think it's a really important book for white people to read. One thing that I really took away from this book is the idea of white women's tears. Um, I'm a very emotional person. I feel feels all the time. Um, and something I never thought about is that historically white women's tears have literally brought death to black men. And so I think we need to be really conscious, white women specifically, um, about how we're sharing our feelings, how we're sharing our tears during this time, and really focus on the issue. The issue is not our feelings about this matter, it's the systemic oppression. <laughs> okay, so let's say that you've done your opening foyer into race, you learned the basics, you learned how you can do something about it, but now you really want to dig into the history. I would highly suggest reading The New Jim Crow. Um, this book is very, it's dense. It goes through the entire history of the U.S., how we went from slavery to Jim Crow laws, um, and how Jim Crow turned into our mass incarceration. It's so eye-opening and so important. Um, very similar to the documentary 13th, which is free to watch right now on YouTube. Highly suggest that. I'll link it below. Um, just everyone needs to know how messed up our mass incarceration system is. It needs to be dismantled. It needs to be completely just, just blown up. It's awful. The mass incarceration system literally just gives black men zero chances of ever accomplishing anything in life other than getting arrested. Um, you can look up the stats for yourself, but black men are way more likely to be arrested for drugs than white men and arrested and put in jail for life. If they're not put away for life and they come back to society, how can they possibly move up in society if everywhere they turn they have to mark this box that says they're a felon, which means that they can't get the jobs that they need, which means they can't get the housing that they need or the Medicare. It's, it's messed up. There's another story in here that really just pissed me off, um, made me sick. It's a story of Ricky Ray Rector um, I highly suggest that you look it up, but the general gist of it is he clearly has like a learning disability and um, mental health issues. And when he was arrested for a pretty small crime, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he was put on death row. And in that process, he got a lobotomy, which made his mental health even worse. Um, but during this time, Bill Clinton was running for president and Ricky Ray Rector was scheduled to be murdered. Um, Bill Clinton went to watch and right before, I mean, just to show like how mentally incapacitated Ricky Ray Rector was during his last meal, he was like, can you save the dessert for me so I can have it afterwards? Like. He truly did not understand what was happening. And and afterwards, um, Bill Clinton just like went on the news and was like, see how tough on crime I am? Ha ha ha, let's kill people. I, ugh, it's awful. So yeah, um, New Jim Crow, highly recommend. Um, if it's too dense of you to read, please watch the 13th. Next book I highly recommend is We Were Eight Years in Power by Tana Hasey Coates. Um, Coates has just a beautiful way of exploring and showcasing complicated issues in a very clear light. Um, this is a collection of his essays. Um, it, everything's very accessible to read. It is dense. There's a lot talked about here, but I think it's accessible for you to read. And finally, this is another essay collection, Thick by Tressie McMillan Cotton. And this explores more issues uh, for black women in today's society. So I think that's a very, very important thing that doesn't get talked about enough. Um, I mean, obviously we need to talk about racism as a whole more, um, but black women 
typically get forgotten and this really really explores a lot of issues um, going through especially for black women's health uh, maternal mortality rate that needs to be addressed in America that we barely talk about so those are all the books about race that I read this month. Um, there's a lot more books to read about race that I plan on doing. I also realized this month that I really, really need to start reading more fiction books by Black authors. Um, I tend to read a lot of nonfiction, but I really need to start uh, reading books about Black joy too. I have a whole list of books below um, that are other books about race that I've read in the past if you want to check those out as well. Um, please let this be a start to a conversation as a start to action. Please let's talk below. Message me. Let's connect. Let's be friends on social media, Instagram, Twitter. Just hit me up. Let's talk. Let's start to make real change. Let's show up.